Tonight, tornado watches across the country. At least 20 reported tornadoes in nine states. The powerful storm now hitting the northeast with torrential rain, potential flooding, even snow as winds begin to kick up. We are in the storm zone and tracking it all. Plus, the incredible images we are getting after that deadly 7.4 earthquake hit Taiwan, its strongest quake in more than two decades. The rising death toll, search for survivors, and efforts to rescue those trapped. And Ukraine exactly, terrorist organization. Exactly, sir. We want dismantled. UNRWA has no place anymore here in this country, in this region. No place. People's because lives on the line? Of course people's lives are on the line because they, they, have, they would have no other alternative. It's been a lifeline for refugees for years, and now it's in the crosshairs in more ways than one. In tonight's Prime Focus, we are in the Middle East reporting on the battle being waged over the role, reputation, and survival of the United Nations Refugee and Works Agency and how millions of refugees could possibly feed themselves without it. And good evening, I'm Phil Lipoff in tonight for Lindsay Davis. Thanks so much for streaming with us. We are going to begin with the deadly storms slamming the East Coast tonight after triggering at least 28 tornadoes this week. In Georgia, overnight, a powerful tornado damaged homes and downed trees, as you can see. In Pennsylvania, a woman was killed when a tree fell on her car as this relentless spring storm heads north, bringing heavy rain and wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour. That system now converging with a second system becoming a nor'easter expected to hammer upstate New York and parts of New England with up to two feet of snow. Rob Marciano is standing by tracking the storm in just a moment, but first to ABC's Trevor Alt at LaGuardia Airport as this weather is wreaking havoc on travel nationwide. Tonight, that system that brought a tornado outbreak to the heartland now tracking up the East Coast as a powerful spring nor'easter. High winds knocking down huge trees in New York City. And in Collegeville, Pennsylvania, outside Philadelphia, an 81-year-old woman killed when a tree crushed her car. Fire department had the jaws of life, and they were trying to cut the driver out of the car. A passenger and a flight attendant on a southwest flight from New Orleans to Orlando injured in severe turbulence over the Gulf of Mexico. Pilots radioing to air traffic control. Was the crew member in the cockpit or in the back? Yeah, the flight attendant. Uh, the flight attendant was in the back, you said? Yes. The flight then diverting to Tampa and outside Atlanta. We got a six foot shelter, man. An EF2 tornado with 115 mile an hour winds tearing through Conyers, Georgia early this morning. This home nearly split in half. Overnight, a rain wrapped tornado causing chaos on Interstate 265 outside Louisville, flipping this tractor trailer. And not far from there, we found Perry Snowden cleaning up after those 100 mile an hour winds. So this is part of the neighbor's roof inside your parents' house? Right, yeah, it's the top of the roof. Blew in and took out the dining room and then took out the upstairs room. Kentucky's governor confirming at least one death in the state. Trevor joins us now from New York's LaGuardia Airport. And Trevor, we are at the height of spring break travel. Uh, how is this weather impacting travel overall, including your, your flight that just came in? <laughs> yeah, well, as you know, Phil, we've been in the midst of a travel surge. You have spring breakers, Easter travel, the upcoming eclipse, too. But this weather has been wreaking havoc all day. There's been more than 6,000 flight delays in total. And the flights that have been in the air, a lot of them have been experiencing severe turbulence. And that does include my flight back from Kentucky, Phil. Yeah, well, glad to have you back on the ground and safe. Trevor Alt, thanks so much tonight. Thank you. This storm has brought so much damage with it already. Let's bring in senior meteorologist Rob Marciano. Rob, what's next? Well, now it's, you know, two, two lows. This is the thing is a two-headed beast, Phil. Look at this. The parent low is still spinning over Chicago, still wrapping around snows in parts of Wisconsin. We're all the coastal low off the Del Marva. That's really pushing the precip up into the northeast. We've already seen over four inches of rain in parts of Pennsylvania. The flood watches are up there into New York City, as are high wind warnings and winter storm warnings. The winds, boy, they've already cranked to over 60 miles an hour in Norwalk, Connecticut, and they'll peak out, I think, overnight tonight for New York in Hartford and Boston. 50, 55, maybe 60 miles an hour in spots, and that will take down some power lines for sure. But here comes the rain, and we'll see some of that rain turn over to sleet, like around I-90, down to the Connecticut border. Rain turning to snow across northern New England. And inland areas, especially the hills of Maine and New Hampshire, that's where we can see potentially one to two feet of heavy wet snow 
falling at least through tomorrow night, if not through Friday morning, before things begin uh, to wind down. But good to know that if you've flooded recently in the Northeast, be prepared for that tonight. And everybody pretty much in the Northeast, before they go to bed, should be prepared for the potential of the power going out while they sleep with these winds. Phil? All right, Rob Marciano in Shreveport, Louisiana tonight. Rob, thank you. Now to our other big story tonight, that powerful and violent earthquake in Taiwan. It's strongest in 25 years. At least nine people are dead, more than 1,000 injured, more than 100 people still trapped. The 7.4 quake brought down this building. People you could see running for their lives. Tonight, firefighters navigating the twisted wreckage in a desperate search for survivors under all that debris. Here's ABC's Marcus Moore. Tonight, the race to free survivors after this deadly earthquake rocked Taiwan, the strongest to hit the island in nearly 25 years. Searchers looking for more than 100 now trapped in the rubble, including at least 71 miners in two rock quarries. The magnitude 7.4 quake striking during the morning rush hour, rattling these terrified commuters on an elevated train car. In the coastal city of Hualien, southeast of the capital of Taipei, some buildings toppling to one side. Families escaping through windows, first responders helping them down ladders. Rescuers working to remove the debris, trying not to lose their footing in the tilted hallways. This woman who escaped saying all the things fell off and everything is damaged. At least nine killed, more than a thousand injured. And fire crews facing a grim task, removing a body from the site of one of the collapsed buildings. The tremors felt across Taiwan. This home surveillance video capturing the violent shaking. Bottles crashing in this restaurant. Dangerous landslides blocking highways and railways. This injured driver pulled from a truck and taken to the hospital. The quake also triggering a tsunami alert in nearby Japan, forcing children to evacuate their schools and sending hundreds to flee to higher ground. Marcus joins us now. And Marcus, some parts of that mountainous country are totally cut off tonight. Do you have any updates on people trapped in those remote areas? Well, Phil, the effort continues, and, and we're learning that close to 50 employees at a hotel in, in the quake zone, they are stuck at that hotel. Uh, they are safe, according to officials. They've managed to reach them uh, by, uh, by communicating with them uh, via telephone. Uh, but right now, crews are working to clear the roads to be able to reach them. Phil. Marcus Moore tonight. Marcus, thank you. There is growing pressure on the Israeli prime minister. Tonight, families of hostages held in Gaza protested inside the parliament building. It comes as President Biden says he is, quote, outraged and heartbroken over the killing of seven aid workers in an Israeli airstrike. And now the head of the World Central Kitchen tonight says he has evidence his workers were targeted systematically. Here's ABC's Britt Clement. Tonight, dramatic images of families with loved ones still held in Gaza, storming Israel's parliament, heckling lawmakers below, smearing paint on the glass. The pressure facing Benjamin Netanyahu inside Israel, matched by the fierce reaction from President Biden, now condemning the Israeli prime minister for IDF forces targeting three clearly marked aid vehicles delivering humanitarian supplies in Gaza. The president saying he's outraged and heartbroken that seven members of the World Central Kitchen were killed. Just today, six of the seven victims transferred out of Gaza. I need to understand that this was not by somebody that is above law and order that decided used to kill us because... Tonight, we're learning more about the path that convoy took after leaving their warehouse. The workers say they coordinated their movements with the Israeli military. Those vehicles were clearly marked. Uh, this war is a complex war. The incident happened in, in, in the middle of the night. It should not have happened. Well, that's certainly one thing everybody agrees on. Britt joins us from Jerusalem. Britt, there is a call planned between Biden and Netanyahu. Yeah, Phil, we understand that amid these heightened tensions, President Biden is expected to speak with Netanyahu tomorrow for the first time since that deadly strike on those aid workers. And this, as the regional tensions too, they escalate. Israel now on high alert over fears of Iran retaliating. Phil. Brett Klenner from Jerusalem tonight. Brett, thank you. Our visual verification team has been examining that airstrike that left those World Central Kitchen aid workers dead. Emmanuel Saliba has a detailed timeline of what you need to know about that deadly strike. On April 1st, seven World Central Kitchen aid workers were leaving a warehouse in Dar al-Bala in central Gaza, according to a statement made by the charity. 
ABC News was not able to confirm the exact location of the warehouse. These seven aid workers were on a mission to feed people in need in Gaza, where 1.1 million people, half of the population, faces imminent risk of famine, according to the Integrated Food Security Phase classification. And according to the charity, the team had unloaded more than 100 tons of humanitarian food aid brought to Gaza by sea. These shipments brought in by sea marked a major shift in Gaza, where aid groups have struggled to get supplies in by truck. World Central Kitchen was the first organization to get aid in by boat since the conflict broke out in October 2023, even building their own pier to receive shipments. Before leaving the warehouse, the group said they had prearranged their route with Israel's military. World Central Kitchen workers were riding in a convoy of three vehicles, two armored cars branded with the group's logo and a soft skin vehicle. And the charity says they were hit as they were leaving the warehouse. The first report of an incident came in on social media around 10.45 p.m. local time on April 1st. Graphic images of the deadly aftermath, including videos of the victims' bodies, started to flood social media. Soon after, images of the destroyed vehicles were also published online. ABC News' visual verification team analyzed these images. They used visual clues to match them with satellite imagery and found that the vehicles were photographed in three different locations, suggesting the convoy may have been hit three separate times. From the car's positions in these images, the convoy appeared to be traveling south along a key route for humanitarian aid. The first car was photographed here. This appears to be one of the two armored vehicles. A second armored vehicle was photographed about half a mile south of the first one. There's a gaping hole in its roof, which appears to have been clearly marked with World Central Kitchen's logo. The third vehicle is found another mile to the south. Scattered on the ground, a pile of orange vests bearing the aid group's name. According to World Central Kitchen, the seven employees killed in the strike were Australian, Polish, British, Palestinian, and one of them, a dual U.S.-Canadian national. In the wake of the deadly strike, World Central Kitchen said it is pausing its work in Gaza. 60 kitchens feeding thousands of hungry people will be shuttered until further notice. The group says it's conducting its own review of the incident. But what I know is that we were targeted deliberately, nonstop, until everybody was dead in this convoy. That, 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 cannot, be, that cannot be the role of uh, an army. I want to be very clear. The strike was not carried out with the intention of harming WCK aid workers. It was a mistake that followed a misidentification at night during a war in a very complex conditions. It shouldn't have happened. The IDF says the results of its investigation will be released soon. We're just present- a thanks to Emmanuel Saliba and the verification team for that. We turn now to the race for the White House. President Biden doubling down uh, on the issue of reproductive rights, reminding voters that Donald Trump has bragged about appointing three Supreme Court justices who voted to overturn Roe v. Wade. Trump, meantime, doubling down on immigration, saying once again that undocumented migrants are, quote, not people. Here's Rachel Scott. Tonight, President Biden doubling down on the issue of abortion, drawing a sharp contrast with Donald Trump. Trump brags about he's the reason Roe v. Wade was overturned. Here's his quote. I did something no one thought possible. I got rid of Roe v. Wade, end of quote. First Lady Jill Biden today declaring come November, the choice will be clear. Once people start to focus in and they see their two choices, Mm -hmm. It's obvious that Joe will win this election. It comes with Trump now increasingly stoking fears of what he calls migrant crime, using this kind of language. Democrats say, please don't call them animals. They're humans. I said, no, they're not humans. They're not humans. They're animals. But data shows U.S.-born citizens are more than twice as likely to be arrested for violent crimes than undocumented immigrants. And President Biden says it was Donald Trump who blocked the tougher bipartisan border security bill because he wants to run on immigration. On the campaign trail, Trump has repeatedly told the stories of families. In Michigan, bringing up Ruby Garcia, a woman allegedly murdered by an undocumented immigrant. They said she had just this most contagious laughter, and when she walked into a room, she lit up that room. And I've heard that from so many people. I spoke to some of her family. But tonight, Ruby Garcia's sister says Trump didn't speak to anyone in their immediate family. 
He did not speak with any of us, so it was um, kind of shocking seeing that he had said that he had spoke with us and is saying, well, misinforming people um, live TV. Rachel joins us now. Rachel, Donald Trump said yesterday he'd address his stance on abortion next week. He's made similar promises before. What can we expect this time? Well, Phil, he provided no further details, and neither has the campaign on when that expected announcement is supposed to happen next week or what the details of it will be. Look, we know Donald Trump nominated three of the Supreme Court justices that laid the groundwork for overturning Roe versus Wade. They supported that. We also know that the former president has criticized Florida's six-week abortion ban. He called it a terrible mistake by Governor Ron DeSantis to sign that into law, and he has privately floated the idea that he supports a 15-week ban, but there are big questions about whether or not he supports a national federal ban on abortion. Obviously, the Supreme Court returned that right back to the states, but the Biden campaign still zeroing in on this issue, putting it front and center ahead of November, Phil. All right, Rachel Scott tonight. Rachel, thank you. Special counsel Jack Smith is responding tonight to an unusual request from the judge overseeing Donald Trump's classified documents case. Judge Eileen Cannon asked lawyers from both sides two weeks ago to suggest jury instructions defending the notion that Trump had unchecked authority to claim all classified documents are his personal property. Smith called that claim pure fiction that contradicts all the evidence in the case. Here's our chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas. Tonight, in an extraordinary filing, special counsel Jack Smith, increasingly frustrated with the Florida judge's handling of the classified documents case, urging her to move the trial forward. Smith bluntly telling Judge Eileen Cannon, who was appointed by Donald Trump, that her decision to even consider Trump's claim that he could just declare classified documents to be his personal papers was fundamentally flawed. Smith's unusually critical language came in response to Judge Cannon's suggestion that she might instruct the jury to take into account Trump's claims that the classified documents were his personal property. Smith writing that such a legal premise is wrong and would distort the trial. And he's urging Judge Cannon to explain her position as soon as possible, making it clear he's ready to appeal to a higher court. Pierre joins me now. Pierre, Judge Cannon is facing some pretty serious criticism that she might actually be delaying this trial on purpose. Well, the special counsel appears increasingly concerned Judge Canning has taken so long to make key rulings. Critics of the judge wonder if she's delaying on purpose to help Donald Trump. An example of just how long some of these decisions are taking, there was a hearing 34 days ago to discuss when the trial should begin, Phil. Judge Cannon still has not announced a decision. All right, Pierre Thomas, thank you. Meantime, a Manhattan judge has denied actor Jonathan Majors' motion to set aside his conviction ahead of sentencing in his domestic violence case. Majors was convicted of assault and harassment of his then-girlfriend, Grace Jabari. The criminal court judge said, quote, there was a reasonable view of the evidence to support that defendant acted recklessly during a March 2023 encounter with Jabari. Sentencing will move forward on Monday. The largest producer of eggs in the United States announcing it has thinned its flock by nearly 2 million birds after bird flu was found in its chickens. This comes after the virus was also found in dairy cows in several states and in one person who had direct contact with an infected animal. Maria Villarreal is in Texas tonight. Tonight, the CDC is closely tracking bird flu across the country after a confirmed case in a Texas dairy farm worker. 11 dairy farms across four states have detected bird flu in cows. Officials believe the Texas man was infected after coming in contact with a cow. It's believed to be the first global case of transmission from mammal to human. What folks should know is we've never seen a transmission of human to human of avian flu, but we're watching closely. As we've learned uh, from COVID, viruses change, um, and we want to make sure we're staying ahead of it. It comes as the country's largest supplier of eggs was forced to destroy nearly 2 million birds after the virus was detected in chickens. Calmaine Foods, behind major brands like Farmhouse Eggs, Eggland's Best, and Lando Lakes halting production at its Texas plant. The CDC says the risk to the public is low. Bird flu doesn't spread through cooked meats or eggs or pasteurized milk. And Maria tells us experts do not believe the price of eggs will be going up. 
right now anyway. Maria Virial, thank you for that. And tonight, we are learning about a safari turned fatal for an American tourist. An 80-year-old woman was killed and another seriously injured in Zambia over the weekend when a bull elephant charged the vehicle. Local authorities are now investigating this video. Experts say elephants, att elephant attacks like this are very rare. The safari company uh, where that American tourist was killed says the guides are well-trained. In this case, they just couldn't get that vehicle out in time. One note on the economy tonight, and it does involve our parent company, Disney. Disney shareholders have ended efforts by activist investor Nelson Peltz to try to win seats on Disney's board of directors. Investors have voted to re-elect all company-backed board members, including Bob Iger, who returned as CEO to the, lead the company amid a changing media landscape. The results of the vote were made public at Disney's meeting of shareholders today. Disney saying the current board, according to preliminary vote tab tabulations, were re-elected by a substantial margin tonight. Iger saying, quote, I want to thank our shareholders for their trust and confidence in our board and management. With the distracting proxy contest now behind us, we're eager to focus 100% on our most important priorities, growth for shareholders and creative excellence for our consumers. There is so much more to get to here on Prime tonight. A surprising request from a state's transportation agency to one of its most popular events, and what the New York Marathon is being asked to pay for. But next, on the brink of famine, aid agencies are playing a crucial role in Gaza. But Israel is pushing for one of the most impactful groups to shut down over allegations involving a few of its staff. In our prime focus, what that could mean for the fight against famine. Because you call UNRWA a UNRWA terrorist terror. organization. Exactly, sir. We want dismantled. UNRWA has no place anymore here in this country, in this region. No place. People's because lives on the line? Of course people's lives are on the line. Because they, they, have, they would have no other alternative. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war, after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Yeah! Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today? Escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about. The migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. What does it take to be the most watched newscast in America? We are part of an operation. Is this our combat operations center? We're approaching the gate. Militants came in from different directions. Their reactor. So you have a couple loaded and ready to go. The house is destroyed, but the flag is okay, it? How important made the USA. Great work. Hi. Appreciate you. Thank you. It's my own. David. David. I'm David Muir. I know you are. You I do. Watch you every night. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. Beyonce's conquering country. My family loves Beyonce. Cowboy Carter comes into the world at a very complex time. People are saying this song is too good to resist. Just because you sing hip hop music with a country accent does not make it country music. The stay in your lane, the, well, that's not real country. It takes somebody who is at superstar status to do something that shakes it all up. It's Beyonce country. This is Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu. 
Monday afternoon. I'm looking up. All eyes and to I'm the sky. For a total solar eclipse, a breathtaking celestial event. ABC News, together with National Geographic, with ABC's David Muir and Lindsay Davis reporting. Watch it all on ABC News Live, National Geographic Channel, Nat Geo Wild, Disney Plus, Hulu, and live on ABC. Eclipse Across America, Monday afternoon, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern. Welcome back. If a potential famine in Gaza is to be averted, who will deliver the aid through that perilous war zone to those who need it the most? Most aid groups say the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees has to play a central role. That agency, called UNRWA, has been providing basic services for the people of Gaza for the past 75 years. But Israel wants UNRWA shut down over its alleged links to Hamas, while those who receive its services liken it to a lifeline. In tonight's Prime Focus, we report on that UN agency's future and what it means for the fight against famine in Gaza. ABC's Tom Sufi Burridge with the story. In the fight to get life-saving supplies to desperate people in northern Gaza, a battle over the role and reputation and even survival of UNRWA. A vast UN agency which, in the midst of this brutal war, and for the past 75 years, has been providing life support for families across the Strip. People also think that, oh, maybe they're just a humanitarian aid distribution agency. No, it's much more than that. UNRWA is like a quasi-government. I mean, we are talking about a massive agency that interacts with every single part of life and every single Palestinian in the Gaza Strip and elsewhere. Amid the bombs, UNRWA run schools now acting as shelters for displaced Palestinians. The agency's food distribution centers, like this one in the crisis hit north, helping to hold back famine. The UN saying some children are now starving to death. But with Israel accusing UNRWA of being tied to Hamas, amid evidence some UNRWA workers participated in the October 7th attack, Congress blocking US funding to that UN agency for at least a year. Its existence now uncertain. People's because lives on the line? Of course people's lives are on the line because they, they, have, they would have no other alternative. UNRWA stands for United Nations Relief and Works Agency and since 1949 it has been a lifeline for millions of Palestinian refugees providing education, healthcare and other basic services in Gaza and the West Bank as well as parts of Lebanon, Jordan and Syria. New Yorker Adam Balukas is a director at UNRWA and says its footprint in war-torn Gaza is huge. We have 13,000 staff working in Gaza, 13,000. In all sectors of public service delivery, the core areas of, of health and education and relief and social services and engineering and microfinance, so we're, ever, we're everywhere in, in Gaza. The humanitarian crisis in Gaza is like nothing we in the UN have seen and I've been around the block. But after the October 7th terror attack in southern Israel, UNRWA's integrity is on the line. Israel says it has evidence that 16 people employed by UNRWA took part in the attack. This Israeli government dossier alleging six UNRWA staff members crossed into Israel on that day, with four UNRWA employees accused of being involved in the taking of hostages. UNRWA has been exposed completely. It's completely tainted with terrorism. Some of their employees participated, participated in the October 7th massacre. Oh, wow, well, there he is. Jonathan Samarano was one of around 1,200 people murdered by Hamas and its affiliates on October 7th. He was uh, very shining with a huge charm. Wherever he went, people wanted to be with him. He always laughed, always joked. This video posted online by Israeli first responders allegedly showing an UNRWA employee helping to move Jonathan's lifeless body into the trunk of an UNRWA vehicle before it was driven into Gaza. UNRWA says it has no way of verifying the video, but is urging Israel to hand over all evidence to investigators. Jonathan's mum, Eilat, wants people to watch that video and says UNRWA should be shut down. <laughs> it's amazing. It's unbelievable that's the worldwide organization 
that should take care of people and should take care of the human rights. And the UN established for those cases. And now it's the opposite. Is part of a kidnapped, is part of murder. The October 7th attack allegations sent shockwaves through the UN. I was personally horrified by those accusations. The US and its allies suspended funding, and any UNRWA staff members implicated were dismissed. An investigation by the UN's Office of Internal Oversight is ongoing. You know, this wasn't a minor issue or some kind of, you know, a, a misappropriation of funds or the theft of a vehicle or something small. These were allegations of a, of a major, potential, serious criminal act on the 7th of October. And so this is why the Commissioner General took this very hard stand and we're, you know, awaiting uh, the reports of the investigation. But the Israeli military says UNRWA's ties to Hamas run much deeper. The IDF publishing several videos saying they show UNRWA food supplies discovered in Hamas tunnels. In this video, the IDF says Hamas weaponry was stored in UNRWA sacks. And it says Hamas tunnels ran underneath UNRWA facilities, including the agency's Gaza HQ. UNRWA says it moved out of its Gaza HQ weeks before those deep underground tunnels were discovered and says empty UNRWA sacks are often recycled and used in Gaza to store other goods. UNRWA firmly rejects any suggestion it's been aiding Hamas and accuses Israel of attempting to demonize the agency. But the accusations about UNRWA's alleged links to Hamas enraging these protesters, who in recent weeks have been blocking the route for aid trucks heading to Gaza. Well, you can see the trucks stacked up on the Egyptian side of the border. This is one of the major crossing points for those aid trucks from Egypt over there into Israel here and on to Gaza. The protesters claim aid going into Gaza ends up in the hands of Hamas, something they claim, without clear evidence, is facilitated by UNRWA workers on the ground, an allegation the agency denies. UNRWA is a major point of the problem. We saw and we keep discovering the involvement of this terror UN organization. Because you call UNRWA, I call UNRWA a, UNRWA a terrorist, terrorist organization? Exactly, sir. We want dismantled. UNRWA has no place anymore here in this country, in this region. No place. That goal, the complete eradication of UNRWA, at least in Gaza, is actively being pursued by the Israeli government. Who in their right mind would let this organization continue dealing with humanitarian aid? So UNRWA has to be dissolved. Despite being under attack, UNRWA is today still working in Gaza, distributing food to families who have lost everything. Our team in Gaza filming some of its staff on the front line of the fight against famine. You know that many NGOs use UNRWA's facilities to store their aid. They rely on UNRWA to deliver the aid that they procure. When American aid workers like Dr. Ter Ahmed are in Gaza saving lives, UNRWA supplies data on the broad humanitarian situation for other NGOs on the ground. It's crucial for with every aspect, pre-planning even. I mean, if we didn't have that sort of information coming out of UNRWA, we'd be working totally blindly. Dr. Ahmed says the idea UNRWA is somehow tied to Hamas is completely unfounded. It couldn't be further from the truth. If you want to say that there have been allegations made against you know, individual employees, I think that's something that needs to be looked in that's very serious. But if you're talking about the institution itself, I mean, I don't think that anybody that has any sort of knowledge about what they do and how long they've existed for would make a similar accusation. I mean, it's just, uh, it's not based in reality. The political reality before October 7th was a Hamas-run government after it won the last election in Gaza in 2006. A terror group in the eyes of the US, for UNRWA employees and any aid agency in Gaza, Hamas was the authority in charge and part of the social and political fabric across the Strip. We have 33,000 staff, all of whom are part of, they are, they are almost all by definition Palestine refugees. And so they're part of the, the landscape, they're part, of the, they're part of the conflict, right? I also have political um, inclinations, right? I'm an American, I vote, right? I'm allowed to have uh, those, those different kinds of um, political aspirations or views uh, or, or uh, understanding of my, of my community, right? But I just don't, I don't act on them. I have to sort of separate my political aspirations and things from my, from my work as a UN employee. And working for UNRWA in Gaza has proven deadly. 
The agency saying one of its employees was killed in an Israeli strike on this food distribution centre last month. More than 170 UNRWA workers killed since the war began. And UNRWA says dozens of its schools and its Gaza HQ have been hit by Israeli bombs. Meanwhile, key US allies like the European Union and Canada now resuming donations to UNRWA, with UNRWA agreeing to allow EU experts to monitor screening for staff members to keep extremists out. But with Congress blocking US funding for at least a year, UNRWA's entire operation is in peril. How crucial a donor is the United States for UNRWA? It's a very important donor. They provide something like 30, 40 percent of our of our funding, but they're also important politically, right? It looks like we have funding through the end of April, and that's very, very tight. What's the impact on the ground if you run yeah. out of money? The services would start to deteriorate. I mean, it becomes a huge, huge problem. With Israel restricting the flow of aid trucks into Gaza, the U.S. Air Force, alongside allies, is dropping relatively small amounts of supplies in. That deadly Israeli strike this week on a team from the World Central Kitchen highlighting the risks for aid workers in Gaza, where a dire humanitarian situation is playing out. Med Global says cutting UNRWA out of the humanitarian response will make the man-made catastrophe in Gaza even worse. And we know time is running out for so many who are so hungry right now. Our thanks to Tom Sufi Burridge for that. There is still much more to get to tonight. Coming up, new details on the Kansas City Chiefs player accused of causing a six-car collision and then taking off what we're learning about one of the cars involved. But next, Forbes' new billionaire list is out. The celebrity who just made her first appearance. What does it take to be the most watched newscast in America? An operation to capture ISIS fighters. This is our combat operation center. We're approaching the gate now. Militants came in from four or five different directions. Operational nuclear reactor. So you have a couple loaded and ready to go. The house is destroyed, but the flag, there's not a tear in it. Not a tear in it. How important is this label right here made the USA? Look at your smile. You're proud of this. I love it. Label right here made the USA. Look at your smile. You're proud of this. I love it. Great work. Hi. Where are you? Where are you? Appreciate <laughs> you. Thank you, David. Good to meet you. Ismail? David. David. Yes. Yes. I'm David Muir. I, I know who you are. You I do. Watch you every night. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. Monday afternoon, I'm looking up. all eyes and to the sky for a total solar eclipse, a breathtaking celestial event. ABC News, together with National Geographic, with ABC's David Muir and Lindsay Davis reporting. Watch it all on ABC News Live, National Geographic Channel, Nat Geo Wild, Disney Plus, Hulu, and live on ABC. Eclipse Across America, Monday afternoon, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern. The strongest females fight for the survival of their families. Oh, hey, the queens. You should see me in the crowd. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today, escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about, the migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, 
This is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. I'm Aaron Katursky at the Trump Building on Wall Street. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back. Forbes just published its new list of the world's billionaires. And before you race off to see if you made the cut this year, although I'm guessing you know if you did or didn't, you're going to want to watch this evening's By the Numbers. There are more billionaires in the world, 2,781 than ever before, and probably many more than that since the richest among us seem to hold the wealth within family trusts. Let's get the number one out of the way. That would be Bernard Arno who's worth $233 billion. Arno controls the LVMH empire, which owns more than 70 luxury brands from Louis Vuitton to Sephora. He's French, but the next seven richest people on the planet are American, and you know them well. Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, Larry Ellison, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, and Steve Ballmer. In fact, more Americans, 813, appear on that list than any other nationality. China is next with 406. And this is kind of surprising. 66% of the world's billionaires are self-made rather than having inherited their fortunes. Some new names on the list this year include Magic Johnson, Sam Altman, the CEO of Open and AI, and wait for it, Taylor Swift. Not much of a surprise there, since her latest Eras tour alone grossed a billion dollars. And there is much more ahead here on Prime. She's out of the tournament, but certainly not out of the game. College basketball phenom Angel Reese talks about what's next for her career. And JetBlue taking a new approach to baggage, why it may be a little harder to know how much you're paying. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, from Poland once again tonight. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Do you think you'll ever be able to go back home? We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Splintered houses and splintered lives. The magnitude of the devastation. You're streaming ABC News Live. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Raleigh, North Carolina. The U.S. Capitol. Mayfield, Kentucky. Minneapolis. Mexico. Tongass National Forest, Alaska. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. Giving you a front row seat to our world as it plays out in real time, live. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights, America's most honored streaming news program, only on ABC News Live. Streaming free right now, wherever you stream your news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today, escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about, the migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Monday afternoon, all eyes to the sky for a total solar eclipse, a breathtaking celestial event. ABC News, together with National Geographic, with ABC's David Muir and Lindsay Davis reporting. Watch it all on ABC News Live, National Geographic Channel, Nat Geo Live, Disney Plus, Hulu, and live on ABC. Eclipse across America, Monday afternoon, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern. Everything is so fine. Little bit of sunshine. Yeah, some more, just a little bit. Breathe some more, just a little bit. Smile a little more, and I'm into it. I, I, 
America every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're gonna love it. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. Start Here. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. We have new details in a six-car collision allegedly involving an NFL player, why New York State is asking a major event to pay up, and why figuring out your baggage fees could become a challenge. These stories and more in tonight's Rundown. New details have emerged about the two sports cars that went out of control and caused a six-vehicle crash on a Dallas highway. Within hours of the crash, police said that the Corvette that was racing a Lamborghini was registered to Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver Rasheed Rice. Now an attorney for a luxury car rental company tells KMBC News that Rice had leased the Lamborghini. He reportedly owned the Corvette. The occupants of the sports car left the scene before police arrived, but the lawyer representing the 23-year-old football star says his client is cooperating. It's one of the most iconic images of the New York City Marathon. Tens of thousands of runners crossing the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, spanning from Staten Island to Brooklyn. The bridge is closed to cars for the event. Now the New York Times is reporting that the authority operating the bridge is now asking to be compensated for the $750,000 in toll revenue it loses while the bridge is closed. Two brothers who helped former President Trump fund his new media company have pleaded guilty to insider trading. According to prosecutors, the two admitted they received confidential information about a pending merger between Trump Media and DWAC. They then used that information to make highly profitable trades. Former President Trump was not involved in the case and there's no evidence he was aware of the insider trading. LSU star forward Angel Reese announced that she is declaring for the WNBA draft. The six foot three All American athlete was named SEC Player of the Year last month and set an NCAA record for most double doubles in a season with 34. Reese brought home the national title last year with the LSU Tigers. Reese, who calls herself the Bayou Barbie, told Vogue magazine that she wanted to be a rookie again and build herself back up. JetBlue Airlines is changing up the price of checked luggage depending on the time of day people travel. For peak times, usually during holidays and over portions of the summer, JetBlue says it will now charge an extra $5 for the first checked bag, making it $50, and charge another $10 for a second bag, bringing it up to $70. This on flights within the U.S., Caribbean, and Latin America. But there is a way to save. If you tell JetBlue about that checked bag earlier in the process before the 24-hour check-in window, you can save 10 bucks by paying for that bag in advance. Still no big winner in the Powerball lottery, now past a billion dollars. After months of no big winner, the jackpot has soared to $1.09 billion. Will tonight be the night? It could be, but don't expect to bring home the entire prize if you win. The lump sum option, which most winners choose, will net you less than half the winning amount. $527 million after taxes, still pretty good, with an initial $2 bet. The patient who received the first genetically edited pig kidney has officially been discharged from the hospital. A four-hour procedure last month was done at Mass General Hospital on 62-year-old patient Richard Slayman, who lives with kidney disease. The hospital announced that he is recovering well and that this achievement marks, quote, a major milestone in the pursuit of having organs more readily available for those in need. Costco is now selling those popular weight loss drugs, including Ozempic. The company is introducing a weight loss program through its healthcare partner, Sesame. And that program is $179 for three months. It includes a doctor's consultation, and the cost of the drug is additional. 
Now to the eclipse across America and one thing you need to safely watch it. Here's World News Tonight anchor David Muir. Tonight, the one thing made in America you'll need for the solar eclipse. The eclipse next Monday, a breathtaking sight from Texas all the way up to Maine. Millions of Americans along the path of totality, more than 2,000 miles long across 15 states. Hi, David. Dr. Jedida Eisler, an astrophysicist and Nat Geo explorer, on what we'll see. A solar eclipse is when the moon moves between the sun and the earth and its shadow is cast on us. One thing to keep in mind if you're gonna watch the eclipse is that it is only safe to look at the sun during full total eclipse. So please wear your glasses, protect your eyes. Happy solar eclipse. And tonight in Bartlett, Tennessee, just outside Memphis, American Paper Optics making those glasses. 40 new hires just for this year's eclipse. Hey, David. Older Jason Jarrett. We have manufactured over 75 million glasses for the upcoming April 8th eclipse. NASA, 2.6 million glasses. 100,000 glasses for the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The workers cutting out the holes for the filters, folding the finished glasses, ready to ship. All of our glasses are made in America. In Los Angeles, dad and daughter duo Mark and Sophie Margolis, their company Rainbow Symphony. Hi, Hi David. David. Eclipses are a family affair. We love working together. It's been such a blast to learn business from my dad, and I wouldn't have it any other way. And they're ready. Well, David, this is the last glasses we're packaging for the 2024 total solar eclipse. After making tens of millions of glasses, this has been a great event. And in Warrensburg, Missouri tonight, Jen Winter and Daystar Filters. Hi, David. Daystar starting with solar filters and telescopes, now Eclipse glasses, too. It's lots more fun that we're able to help more people witness the eclipse and do it safely. When you buy something that's made in America, you can trace it back to an actual person and people who are making these for us. 1,500 orders a day, 50,000 orders for this eclipse alone, hiring 16 new workers to help out. That's Will with the glasses right off the line, then testing them out in the sun. All of this with three words in mind. Hiring 16 new workers. David, thank you. If you plan to watch the eclipse from the comfort of your couch, you can do that too. Tune in to Eclipse Across America with special coverage beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern with the main event starting at 2 p.m. anchored by David Muir and Lindsay Davis right here on ABC News Live. Have you ever wondered what happens to the trash we produce each day? Why are our oceans becoming increasingly polluted with plastic? And did you know that a significant portion of the food we waste could feed millions? In his new book, Total Garbage, How We Can Fix Our Waste and Heal Our World, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Edward Humes investigates how waste is embedded in our daily lives and reveals how it drives major environmental health and economic crises. Humes also offers solutions solutions by showing us how waste is not inevitable and the roles we can play in creating a cleaner, greener future. Well, joining us now is Edward Humes. Sir, good to see you. Thanks for taking the time to be with us tonight. Uh, just off the bat, I'm curious, why this topic now? Well, Phil, it's um, based on an earlier book I did that focused on what we throw away. And um, for this book, I looked at the larger question, what if, if many of the environmental problems that we're facing, plastic pollution, climate change, energy crisis, um, really came down to one kind of arch villain, waste, uh, as the mm. driving force behind them. And that's really the, 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 the basic premise of this book. A total Garbage opens with a, a pretty stark statement. Um, and we'll quote it for you. You swallowed 285 pieces of plastic today. You will do it again tomorrow and the next day and the next. Talk about the pervasive nature, if you will, of plastic pollution and the impact it has on our daily lives. Yeah, I mean, the World Wildlife Study, the uh, uh, World Wildlife Fund had a study that suggests that we're eating about a credit card a week, a credit card's worth of plastic. A credit card, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, really that is alarming. Horrible, right? um, you write that there are various health effects linked to plastic toxins, including, and we'll quote this again, infertility, sexual dysfunction in adults, impaired, impaired physical and intellectual development in children, high blood pressure, weakened immune systems, and a variety of cancers. Obviously alarming findings, but what steps can we take to minimize our exposure uh, to these kind of plastic toxins? 
Well, it's not it's not plastics, the entire universe of plastics that's the problem. It is the disposable plastics. And here you have this material that's filled with chemicals, it's a fossil fuel product, and it lasts forever. Nature really can't absorb it. Bacteria don't eat it. It's it's not like a natural substance. It's the first and largest synthetic substance we we uh, have in in our daily lives. And making a disposable product out of a forever piece of waste is kind of <laughs> insane. And that's why you have so much trouble recycling it because it's really not designed to be recycled well. And that's actually the smallest part of our waste problem, though. That I. Uh, uh, was focusing on this book. Um, right, I mean, in the book, in addition yeah, to plastic, your book explores various forms of waste, from food to energy to fashion. Which do you see is the most urgent to address and why? The, the most wasteful thing we do is transportation. And uh, I have to tell you, this: these fuel efficiency miles per gallon ratings are uh, kind of a greenwash, really. They're not telling us what we need to know. If you want to understand how your cars really work, $4 out of every five you pay at the pump is wasted. It goes to making heat, not movement of the car. And basically from a physicist stand, uh, stand, uh, point of view, it is uh, like a furnace on wheels. That's just one example. Our energy systems waste 67% of our energy. So two thirds of your electric bill goes to waste. And that's what's driving climate change. It's not what we use as much as what we waste that's killing us. Mm. All right, Edward Humes, thanks so much for taking the time to talk about it. Total Garbage, How We Can Fix Our Waste and Heal Our World is now available to purchase wherever books are sold. And that's our show for this hour. I'm Phil Lipoff. Stay with ABC News Live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories. Thanks so much for streaming with us. And coming up in the next hour, the moves Ukraine is making to boost its military and why its president delayed the decision for months. Plus the latest on a powerful spring storm hitting the Northeast. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. What does it take to be the most watched newscast in America? An operation to capture ISIS fighters. This is our combat operations center. We're approaching the gate now. Militants came in from four or five different directions. Operational nuclear reactor. So you have a couple loaded and ready to go. The house is destroyed, but the flag, there's not a tear in it. Not a tear in it. How important is this label right here made the USA? Look at your smile. You're proud of this. I love it. Great work. Hi. Where are you? Where are you? Appreciate <laughs> you. Thank you, David. Good to meet you. Ismail? David. David. Yes, yes. I'm David Muir. I, I know who you are. You I do. Watch you every night. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. 
Monday afternoon, I'm looking up. all eyes now to the sky for a total solar eclipse, a breathtaking celestial event. ABC News, together with National Geographic, with ABC's David Muir and Lindsay Davis reporting. Watch it all on ABC News Live, National Geographic Channel, Nat Geo Wild, Disney Plus, Hulu, and live on ABC. Eclipse Across America, Monday afternoon, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern. Reporting from Monterey Park, California, I'm Robin Roberts. Wherever, wherever the story is, we're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Good evening. I'm Phil Lipoff in for Lindsay Davis tonight. Thanks so much for streaming with us. We've got a lot of news to get to tonight, including the mass tornado watches across the country. At least 20 reported tornadoes in nine states. The powerful storm now hitting the northeast with torrential rain, potential flooding, even snow as wind kicks up. We are in the storm zone tonight tracking it all. Plus, the incredible images, violent images we are getting from the deadly 7.4 earthquake as it hit Taiwan, strongest quake there in more than two decades. The rising death toll, search for survivors, and efforts to rescue those who are still trapped. And new details from a call between President Biden and China's president. What they said about the future of TikTok. We begin now, though, with the deadly storm slamming the East Coast tonight after triggering at least 28 tornadoes this week. In Georgia overnight, a powerful tornado damaging homes and downing trees, as you see there. In Pennsylvania, a woman was killed when a tree fell on her car as the powerful spring storm heads north, bringing heavy rain and wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour. That system now converging with a second system becoming a nor'easter expected to hammer upstate New York and parts of New England with up to two feet of snow. Rob Marciano is standing by to track the storm in a moment, but first, ABC's Trevor Alt at LaGuardia Airport, where the weather is wreaking havoc on travel nationwide. Tonight, that system that brought a tornado outbreak to the heartland now tracking up the East Coast as a powerful spring nor'easter. High winds knocking down huge trees in New York City. And in Collegeville, Pennsylvania, outside Philadelphia, an 81-year-old woman killed when a tree crushed her car. The fire department had the jaws of life, and they were trying to cut the driver out of the car. A passenger and a flight attendant on a southwest flight from New Orleans to Orlando injured in severe turbulence over the Gulf of Mexico. Pilots radioing to air traffic control. Was the crew member in the cockpit or in the back? The yeah, flight attendant. Uh, the flight attendant was in the back, you said? Yes. Yeah. The flight then diverting to Tampa and outside Atlanta. We got a six for shelter, man. An EF2 tornado with 115 mile an hour winds tearing through Conyers, Georgia early this morning. This home nearly split in half. Overnight, a rain wrapped tornado causing chaos on Interstate 265 outside Louisville, flipping this tractor trailer. And not far from there, we found Perry Snowden cleaning up after those 100 mile an hour winds. So this is part of the neighbor's roof inside your parents' house? Right, yeah, it's the top of the roof. Blew in and took out the dining room and then took out the upstairs room. Kentucky's governor confirming at least one death in the state. Trevor joins us now from New York's LaGuardia Airport. And Trevor, we are at the height of spring break travel. Uh, how is this weather impacting travel overall, including your, your flight that just came in? <laughs> yeah, well, as you know, Phil, we've been in the midst of a travel surge. You have spring breakers, Easter travel, the upcoming eclipse, too. But this weather has been wreaking havoc all day. There's been more than 6,000 flight delays in total. And the flights that have been in the air, a lot of them have been experiencing severe turbulence. And that does include my flight back from Kentucky, Phil. Yeah, well, glad to have you back on the ground and safe. Trevor Alt, thanks so much tonight. Thank you. This storm has brought so much damage with it already. Let's bring in senior meteorologist Rob Marciano. Rob, what's next? Well, now it's, you know, two, two lows. This is the thing is a two-headed beast, Phil. Look at this. The parent low is still spinning over Chicago, still wrapping around snows in parts of Wisconsin. We're all the coastal low off the Del Marva. That's really pushing the precip up into the northeast. We've already seen over four inches of rain in parts of Pennsylvania. The flood watches are up there into New York City, as are high wind warnings and winter storm warnings. The winds, boy, they've already cranked to over 60 miles an hour in Norwalk, Connecticut, and they'll peak out, I think, overnight tonight for New York in Hartford and Boston, 
50, 55, maybe 60 miles an hour in spots, and that will take down some power lines for sure. But here comes the rain, and we'll see some of that rain turn over to sleet, like around I-90, down to the Connecticut border. Rain turning to snow across northern New England. And inland areas, especially the hills of Maine and New Hampshire, that's where we can see potentially one to two feet of heavy wet snow falling at least through tomorrow night, if not through Friday morning, before things begin uh, to wind down. But good to know that if you've flooded recently in the Northeast, be prepared for that tonight. And everybody pretty much in the Northeast, before they go to bed, should be prepared for the potential of the power going out while they sleep with these winds. Phil? All right, Rob Marciano in Shreveport, Louisiana tonight. Rob, thank you. Now to our other big story tonight, that powerful earthquake in Taiwan, its strongest in 25 years. At least nine people are dead, more than 1,000 injured, still more than 100 people trapped. A 7.4 quake brought down this building. You can see people running for their lives. Tonight, firefighters navigating the twisted wreckage in a desperate search for survivors under all that debris. Here's ABC's Marcus Moore. Tonight, the race to free survivors after this deadly earthquake rocked Taiwan, the strongest to hit the island in nearly 25 years. Searchers looking for more than 100 now trapped in the rubble, including at least 71 miners in two rock quarries. The magnitude 7.4 quake striking during the morning rush hour, rattling these terrified commuters on an elevated train car. In the coastal city of Hualien, southeast of the capital of Taipei, some buildings toppling to one side. Families escaping through windows, first responders helping them down ladders. Rescuers working to remove the debris, trying not to lose their footing in the tilted hallways. This woman who escaped saying all the things fell off and everything is damaged. At least nine killed, more than a thousand injured. And fire crews facing a grim task, removing a body from the site of one of the collapsed buildings. The tremors felt across Taiwan. This home surveillance video capturing the violent shaking. Bottles crashing in this restaurant. Dangerous landslides blocking highways and railways. This injured driver pulled from a truck and taken to the hospital. The quake also triggering a tsunami alert in nearby Japan, forcing children to evacuate their schools and sending hundreds to flee to higher ground. Our thanks to Marcus Moore. There is growing pressure on the Israeli Prime Minister tonight. Families of hostages held in Gaza protested inside the Parliament building. It comes as President Biden says he is, quote, outraged and heartbroken over the killing of seven aid workers in an Israeli airstrike. Their bodies are now headed home to their countries. ABC's Britt Clement in Israel. Tonight, dramatic images of families with loved ones still held in Gaza, storming Israel's parliament, heckling lawmakers below, smearing paint on the glass. The pressure facing Benjamin Netanyahu inside Israel, matched by the fierce reaction from President Biden, now condemning the Israeli prime minister for IDF forces targeting three clearly marked aid vehicles delivering humanitarian supplies in Gaza. The president saying he's outraged and heartbroken that seven members of the World Central Kitchen were killed. Just today, six of the seven victims transferred out of Gaza. I need to understand that this was not by somebody that is above law and order that decided used to kill us because... Tonight, we're learning more about the path that convoy took after leaving their warehouse. The workers say they coordinated their movements with the Israeli military. Those vehicles were clearly marked. Uh, this war is a complex war. The incident happened in, in, in the middle of the night. It should not have happened. Britt Clement from Jerusalem tonight. We turn now to the race for the White House here in this country. President Biden doubling down on the issue of reproductive rights, reminding voters that Donald Trump has bragged about appointing three Supreme Court justices who voted to overturn Roe v. Wade. Trump, meantime, doubling down on immigration, saying once again that undocumented migrants are, quote, not people. Here's Rachel Scott. Tonight, President Biden doubling down on the issue of abortion, drawing a sharp contrast with Donald Trump. Trump brags about he's the reason Roe v. Wade was overturned. Here's his quote. I did something no one thought possible. I got rid of Roe v. Wade, end of quote. First Lady Jill Biden today declaring come November, the choice will be clear. Once people start to focus in and they see their two choices, mm -hmm. it's obvious that Joe will win this election. 
It comes with Trump now increasingly stoking fears of what he calls migrant crime, using this kind of language. Democrats say, please don't call them animals. They're humans. I said, no, they're not humans. They're not humans. They're animals. But data shows U.S.-born citizens are more than twice as likely to be arrested for violent crimes than undocumented immigrants. And President Biden says it was Donald Trump who blocked the tougher bipartisan border security bill because he wants to run on immigration. On the campaign trail, Trump has repeatedly told the stories of families. In Michigan, bringing up Ruby Garcia, a woman allegedly murdered by an undocumented immigrant. They said she had just this most contagious laughter, and when she walked into a room, she lit up that room. And I've heard that from so many people. I spoke to some of her family. But tonight, Ruby Garcia's sister says Trump didn't speak to anyone in their immediate family. He did not speak with any of us, so it was um, kind of shocking seeing that he has said that he has spoke with us and is saying, well, misinforming people um, live TV. Rachel Scott reporting from the campaign trail tonight. Special counsel Jack Smith is responding to an unusual request from the judge overseeing Donald Trump's classified documents case. Judge Eileen Cannon asking lawyers from both sides two weeks ago to suggest jury instructions defending the notion that Trump had unchecked authority to claim all classified documents are his personal property. Smith calling that claim pure fiction that contradicts the evidence, all of the evidence in the case. Here's our chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas. Tonight, in an extraordinary filing, special counsel Jack Smith increasingly frustrated with the Florida judge's handling of the classified documents case, urging her to move the trial forward. Smith bluntly telling Judge Eileen Cannon, who was appointed by Donald Trump, that her decision to even consider Trump's claim that he could just declare classified documents to be his personal papers was fundamentally flawed. Smith's unusually critical language came in response to Judge Cannon's suggestion that she might instruct the jury to take into account Trump's claims that the classified documents were his personal property. Smith writing that such a legal premise is wrong and would distort the trial. And he's urging Judge Cannon to explain her position as soon as possible, making it clear he's ready to appeal to a higher court. Our thanks to Pierre tonight. The largest producer of eggs in the United States announcing it has thinned its flock by nearly 2 million birds after bird flu was found in its chickens. This comes after the virus was also found in dairy cows in several straight states and in one person who had direct contact with an infected animal. Maria Villarreal is in Texas tonight. Tonight, the CDC is closely tracking bird flu across the country after a confirmed case in a Texas dairy farm worker. 11 dairy farms across four states have detected bird flu in cows. Officials believe the Texas man was infected after coming in contact with a cow. It's believed to be the first global case of transmission from mammal to human. What folks should know is we've never seen a transmission of human to human of avian flu, but we're watching closely. As we've learned uh, from COVID, viruses change, um, and we want to make sure we're staying ahead of it. It comes as the country's largest supplier of eggs was forced to destroy nearly 2 million birds after the virus was detected in chickens. Calmaine Foods behind major brands like Farmhouse Eggs, Eggland's Best, and Lando Lakes halting production at its Texas plant. The CDC says the risk to the public is low. Bird flu doesn't spread through cooked meats or eggs or pasteurized milk. Maria also adds experts don't expect the price of eggs to go up, at least for now. Maria, thank you. Now to the new details on the American tourist killed by a rampaging elephant on a safari in Zambia. The 80-year-old woman was with five other tourists and a guide when the elephant rammed their vehicle. The last desperate moments were caught on video. Here's ABC's James Longman. Tonight, the terrifying moment a safari turned fatal for an American tourist. Hey! An 80-year-old woman killed. She's not yet been identified. Another woman seriously injured when a bull elephant charged this vehicle in Zambia Saturday. The victim's identities have not been made public. Local authorities now investigating the video. You can see the elephant beginning to trail the six safari goers and their guide in Kafu National Park. Then it attacks, using its tusks to flip the vehicle and those inside. This latest incident just weeks after another scare in South Africa. 
A bull elephant lifting this safari vehicle several feet in the air twice, dropping the truck and those inside. That tour operator telling ABC News that some tourists came too close to the elephant, trying to take pictures, irritating the creature. I was scared for the people that was inside the truck because I knew that there's nothing anyone could do right now to help them. The animal eventually losing interest. No one was injured in that incident. And Phil, experts say elephant attacks like these are very rare. The safari company where that American tourist was killed say uh, that their guides are very well trained. But on this occasion, he just couldn't get the vehicle out in time. Phil? James Longman, thank you. The patient who received the first genetically edited pig kidney has officially been discharged from the hospital. The four-hour procedure last month was done at Mass General Hospital on 62-year-old patient Richard Slayman, who lives with kidney disease. The hospital announcing that he is recovering well and that this achievement marks a, quote, major milestone in the pursuit of having organs more readily available for those who need them. There's still much more to get to tonight. Coming up, new details from a call between President Biden and China's president, what they said about the future of TikTok. But next, she once worked for Netflix in the HR department. Now she has a stand-up special streaming on the platform. She's going to tell us how she made that transition next. Whenever news breaks... We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. Monday afternoon. I'm looking up. All eyes now to the sky. For a total solar eclipse. A breathtaking celestial event. ABC News. Together with National Geographic. With ABC's David Muir and Lindsay Davis reporting. Watch it all on ABC News Live. National Geographic Channel, Nat Geo One, Disney Plus, Hulu, and live on ABC. Eclipse Across America, Monday afternoon, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern. What does it take to be the most watched newscast in America? We are part of an operation. Is this is our combat operation center. We're approaching the gate. Militants came in from different directions. Nuclear reactor. So you have a couple loaded and ready to go. The house is destroyed, but the flag is not a carry in it. How important it made to USA. Great work. Hi. Appreciate you. Thank you. It's my own. David. David. I'm David Muir. I know you are. You I do. Watch you every night. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. Reporting from the campaign trail here in South Carolina, I'm Rachel Scott. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back. We are tracking several headlines around the world at this hour. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky signed a measure lowering the country's draft eligibility age to 25 today. It's one of several measures Ukraine's parliament passed last year to replenish the country's military ranks. The moves have been particularly unpopular, politically unpopular as well, as Zelensky had delayed signing it in the hope that he wouldn't need to. Chinese President Xi Jinping was the first to bring up the subject of TikTok in yesterday's call with President Biden. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby said today that President Biden responded by assuring Xi that the U.S. does not want to ban TikTok, but is seeking Chinese government divestiture to protect American users' data security. Social media app was one of many subjects the two discussed in the 90-minute call. 
And in Argentina, laid off workers and union members staged a symbolic takeover of the Ministry of Labor to protest government cutbacks that will eliminate 15,000 jobs. The cuts are part of the president's effort to get the country's rampant inflation under control. Union leaders say they are considering a call for a national strike to demand a rollback of the planned cuts. From the HR department to the stand-up stage, Leslie Liao's sharp wit and hilarious observations on life as a first-generation Asian American and a single woman, sort of, we'll talk more about that, uh, has taken the comedy industry by storm. Let's take a look. It's confusing, I don't know, like I'm, I'm straight, so I'm attracted to men, but I don't find men attractive. <laughs> Does that make sense? Do you know what I mean, honey? Do you know what I mean? It's like, I want you to hold me, but do you always have to wear a hat? <laughs> okay, fresh off the heels of her highly anticipated Netflix comedy special, Leslie joins us here in studio. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you, you too. <laughs> Hello. Let's start by, you were in, you were in the HR department at Netflix, yeah. which I, I find, you know, terribly ironic because a lot of your jokes wouldn't, wouldn't be able to stand in like the workplace. So you had all that stuff in your head working in HR. Correct, I did. My life is very silly. So yes, I, I had a job that was in the HR department at Netflix, but it's such a massive company that by default it was in HR. But uh, I mean, like everyone else does, even not for comics, like you kind of have to compartmentalize, like what are my personal weekend thoughts versus my like daytime corporate thoughts? Like everyone has a little, separation Good rule of thumb. just mine was like a little extreme so how'd you wind up how'd you make your way from there to on a netflix special um little sleep <laughs> a lot of like self-torture um discipline eating protein bars in the car like just just like grinding my schedule to an unrealistic degree but like i i really did try to keep those worlds really separate so just staying in my lane and my day job and focusing on the corporate stuff and then the second i left the office I just like put on my comedy cape mm. and ran around LA doing shows. So it was just like a lot of grinding. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it 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 worked out. Uh, the Netflix special yeah. is great. Uh, Thank par you. Part of what you talk about some of the some of the funniest uh, parts of your bit are about you being a single woman uh, mm -hmm. in, in your thirties. And I, I I would never even reference you being single or your age, except as part of your. I reference it a lot. Uh, okay, funny. you reference no it a lot, so I don't <laughs> want anybody to say yeah. why are you like, talking why? about her age. Um, <laughs> But what are some of the things from being single, dating in your 30s? What are some of the most absurd things, some of the most wild things you've come across? I mean, it's just exhausting to like try. Like it's just too much pressure. Like every every day was so much so much pressure. Like and I um, I think we all have trouble being present in the moment. So unfortunately for me, on a date, I would be like analyzing the date, like, a, you know, a sports commentator analyzes a game, like in my mind, I'm like, did she, did you fumble that? Like what happened? <laughs> so it's just, it's hard to like, it's hard to be yourself all the time and yeah. be present. That's the, that's the stuff I struggled with. All right, well, you also explore experiences growing up as an Asian American in a small town. Um, how do you balance personal anecdotes? How do you turn personal anecdotes into something that a wider audience can laugh at? That's tough. It's a good, it is tough. I just like, if if my family thinks it's funny and if I think it's really authentic to me, then I'll do it. And a lot of the stuff is personal, but so many comics joke about their marriage and family and childhood. Right. And as much as your childhood might be different, if they're being real about it, it's always funny. So as long as I, I feel like it's super authentic to me, then that's like safe. Yeah. yeah, and you are touring the U.S., but you're also going to London, Glasgow, Australia. Um, what can people expect? And and I'll, I'll ask you. <laughs> I keep, like, normally, I would never say these things to someone I'm sitting, but no, but know. you're not single anymore. I'm not single <laughs> so, anymore. But th that th yeah. you know, because you did so much material about you being single, is it going to change what people see at your shows? It will a tad. So I. All the stuff that I have out recently is all me being single. Like right. that's most of what I joked about. Um, I don't do a lot of that stuff anymore, so I keep it accurate to new relationship, being in a new relationship in your 30s, all that stuff. So it's in it's in my tour. So you just have to come and see. Well, your comedy is so funny, whether you're single or you're with somebody, whatever it is, your jokes are really funny and relatable. Thank so you. thank you for that. And her Netflix special verified stand-up is now streaming and you can visit her website for upcoming tours.
tour dates, wherever you are. Leslie, thanks. Thank you. And still to come, why a new cafe in New York City is doing more than just serving drinks. They're making a difference. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. What would you do if you saw this? He seemed very uptight. Because you're asking me to go to your hotel room. What's the big deal? A young woman being harassed by her manager. You know how the music industry works. Would you step in to help? Are you okay? Like these everyday heroes? Yeah, I just got some weird vibes. Do you want to leave with me? Come on, please. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Hi, ma'am. That was amazing. You're still shaking. I wanted her to be okay. What would you do? Sunday night, all new on ABC. You should see me. The strongest females fight for the survival of their families. All eyes to the sky for a total solar eclipse, a breathtaking celestial event. ABC News, together with National Geographic, with ABC's David Muir and Lindsay Davis reporting. Watch it all on ABC News Live, National Geographic Channel, Nat Geo Wild, Disney Plus, Hulu, and live on ABC. Eclipse Across America, Monday afternoon, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern. And finally tonight, a story from right down the block, a new cafe here in New York City with some very special employees who are serving plenty of smiles. Reporter Lauren Glassberg from our partner station WABC has our local lowdown. In New York City, there's a cafe on just about every corner. It is 6 4 But Cafe Joyeux serves inclusion with every cup. I'm really good at making lattes hot and cold. Mm. And I love drinking them too. Rachel Barcelona has autism and is simply thrilled to be working here. I got jobs but was barely getting paid or didn't get paid, which is a problem in the disabled community. We get hired but no one pays us because they think we aren't worthy or are a burden. But Cafe Joyeux is all about employing and empowering people like Rachel or Nick. The idea for the business was born in 2017 in France. There are now 20 of these cafes in Europe. This New York City location is the first in the U.S. It opened last month and already has a following. You can choose any coffee shop, you can choose any you know lunch place, but here it really supports people that want to be a part of a community. Which is why Jacqueline Cottrell brought her son Jake. I know my son will be launching into employment soon and it's it's exciting and it's wonderful. Shrey Campbell is the general manager here and loves her team. I come to work trying to prove myself to them instead of them proving themselves to me. I'm always like trying to set them goals like okay what do you want to learn next what do you want to do next and after this job where do you want to go. But for now Rachel doesn't want to go anywhere but here something to consider on World Autism Awareness Day. People who have autism are capable of anything. We want to work. We want to show that we are amazing. That's the truth. You are amazing. And Lauren, thank you for the heads up. That's the next cup of coffee. And that's our show for tonight. I'm Phil Lipoff. ABC News Live is here for you all night with the latest news, context, and analysis. You can always find us on Hulu, Roku, Pluto TV, the ABC News app, and of course, abcnews.com. Good night.